Good morning, everybody. My name is Devadipta Day, and I am a researcher in Microsoft Research AI in Redmond. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to do meta-reasoning in software pipelines, especially in big, large software pipelines. Mark Anderson in 2011 said, like, software is eating the world, and indeed, we are a giant company with lots of software pipelines everywhere. But even today, when we write software pipelines, they don't usually react. We write them nominally, so they don't react or reflect upon how the resources are changing and how latency and resource constraints may be changing upon them dynamically and, and uh, change parameters and configurations as well as like you know where certain modules of the pipelines are running so that they can respect as best as they can latencies and accuracy requirements that this application at the end requires. And I will show you like how we are taking steps to really achieve such self-reflecting uh, meta-reasoning pipelines. And before we go to go on to that part of uh, the meta-reasoning process, I would like to introduce the platform for situated intelligence, and which is a framework that we have built here with a large team of developers and researchers in Microsoft Research in order to do integ write integrative systems very rapidly at the production level without requiring a lot of like reinventing of the wheel with terms of like message passing, inter-process communication, distribution, and marshalling and demarshalling of like you know. Um, uh, different data types and messages. So let me introduce to you the platform for situated intelligence and uh, what is SAI. So it's completely open source uh, uh, framework which allows you to enable the fast development and fielding and study of integrative AI systems like robots, home robots, uh, autonomous cars, drones, and you can quickly write all such modules using the SAI framework. And, and uh, at its very, uh, like, you know, at the risk of oversimplifying, uh, Sai will take in like you know inputs from cameras, microphone arrays, or any other sensor that you have, and we have a large array of pre-built components that we call in Sai, which are already designed to take in inputs from almost any camera, USB camera, web camera, Kinect, lidar, and and make it available as as in a publish subscribe system within the Sai framework, and then you can have like you know write all your modules like face tracking, sound localization speech uh, uh, source identification and then higher level constructs like let's say you want to send like you know signals to the motor controllers of a robot or you want to like you know uh, talk to humans interacting with the robot and this is all like you know the concurrency the runtime um, the parallelization is just all handled for you so that if you as the robotic systems developer don't have to do really anything other than focus on writing the core logic that you want to write and we have a eco large ecosystem of AI components like sensor components, imaging, audio, speech and language, vision, interaction, as well as like bridges to existing frameworks which have uh, in the open source world like OpenCV library as, and the robot operating system which is popular in the open source world. And um, Sai is open sourced under the MIT license so it's completely free for you to do whatever you want with including commercial applications. And now we, I'm, I would like to talk a little bit about the meta reasoning uh, scenario. So imagine you have a software pipeline and in this case we have a very basic like you know for purposes of elucidation a basic software pipeline where we have an image stream going into a face detector with the face detector has an option of four algorithms. Some algorithms are very cheap and fast but inaccurate but some algorithms may be a big giant neural network which are very accurate but take more time. And then the output of this face detector is a stream of faces and the stream of faces goes to a, like for example a face landmark detector whose job again is it has these like you know various algorithms uh, one of these may be very fast and give you only five landmarks on your face whereas algorithm three may be very expensive and give you 87 landmarks on the face and then the output of this is a sequence of like you know a stream of faces face locations and landmarks on their faces and you can imagine that like you know that the system level designer wants that no matter what kind of image stream comes in or no matter on what computer or system you are running, it's very important to never exceed 450 milliseconds. And let's say we want to make it such that um, not utilizing the 450 millisecond budget efficiently results in a penalty, like we, don't, we want to penalize that. But anytime you exceed 450 milliseconds, you must pay a large uh, penalty as well. And, and that's really bad. So we want this, the loss function, the overall utility function, looks somewhat like this U-shaped curve, where it slopes down gently up to zero around 450, and then goes up rapidly back up again. And what you would really want to do is that we are 
that no matter what image comes in, you want to switch algorithms such that this latency is held constant, both at the face detector and the face landmark part. So we've, we pose this as a structured bandit uh, problem, which is just machine learning terminology, which basically um, says that we can look at partial feedback of this only or this loss function, scalar loss function coming in at the end of the pipeline and learn from it using the context from ResNet 50 features. And this contextual bandit algorithm will learn how to do meta reasoning and depending upon what images is coming in, it will learn to switch the uh, algorithm such that the latency is is respected. And you can see how this can be very important in scenarios where you are using such pipelines in uh, either embedded inside a robot or in as a service on the web, as for example, like in Microsoft Cognitive Services, where respecting latencies and, uh, user, perf and user guarantees, performance guarantees is very important and sometimes maybe even contractual. So let me give you like an example of how this is going to work. So in this example, we will only have the face detector pipeline and which has got four different algorithms going from like very small, inaccurate, but very fast uh, models to very extremely uh, expensive models, but which are much more accurate. So in this, you can see, for example, this is a plot of the utility stream, which is the last stream at the end. And, and the higher is the number, that means the utility you want that is bad and you want this number to go down as much as quickly as possible. So, and in here, you are seeing like the algorithm choice that the meta reasoner is making. So right now the meta reasoner is deciding that using algorithm three is the best possible thing which minimizes the loss the best because um, of the content of the image and for how much time it is taking. It's coming close to 450 milliseconds so it really wants to stay around use parameter three. Once in a while it's going to do some exploration. For example, it dipped to and used algorithm two here. Again, it used algorithm two, algorithm one. So it, it, it continuously does, in, on, in our case, the parameter is set to be like to do 10% exploration, 10% of the time, such that like, you know, we can react to non-stationarities. Like if the distribution is changing, unless you explore, you are not going to detect that the circumstances are changing and your reward function is actually changing. Uh, but now I'm going to, what I'm going to do is going to I'm going to simulate you introducing a large number of people by putting this picture in front of the web camera, which is, which is uh, on my laptop. And we will see that, like, you know, usually the face detector is designed uh, currently in such a way that uh, it's an SDK that we are using, that the larger the number of like, you know, faces that are present in the image, the slower every algorithm runs. And this is something we have benchmarked against standard data sets. So I'm going to simulate here, like, you know, and you're seeing here how it is at three most of the time. Pay attention to this as I, as I introduce this, and you will see this show up here in the screen, that it will immediately change regime and go down to around algorithm zero, because all the algorithms will take much larger time, and algorithm zero will then start taking around 450 millisecond and and the meta learner recognize will will see that and will will automatically adjust so So now you can suddenly see that it's no longer like you know tracking algorithm three, but it switches down to like you know other algorithm choice zero and that really like you know minimizes um, the late minimizes the number of seconds it will take in terms of utility and then as I quickly remove it it will go back up and as you can see it, it immediately went back up and is now again tracking algorithm 3. These dips once in a while are again it, the, the algorithm is exploring, the meta reasoner is exploring uh, to make sure that it, it, it's, the regime has not changed and the compute resources and the number of faces are still okay. And, and this is a, a quick, dirty example of how meta reasoning can really help us uh, optimize software pipelines end to end, such that like you know the key performance indicators are respected no matter what distribution of uh, an input and uh, state and resource constraints are available. Thank you very much, and we hope to talk to you more.